Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yo, if we could share the pre-show <laughs> notes. <laughs> No, everything is not meant to be content, y'all. I promise you it's not. Uh, have you looked over the list? I did. Did you add anything? I added my two bullet points because that's what I was thinking Where? of in that moment. I have dashes next to mine. Towards the bottom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then as we're talking, I know I'll think of more, but it's like one of those when you said Add to the list. I was like, my mind blanked. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I really be like, so it's funny. I be asking people to add to the list, but I'm so used to people not holding up their end that I do uh, overdo it anyway. But I'm you glad got you a big to list. <laughs> I know. I'd rather have too much to talk about than not enough. Uh, but that's good though, because half of this stuff was stuff that I already like was thinking of. So yes. I was like, okay. So that's why I started adding like exclamation point. Ooh, I slipped up when I said that, but <laughs> I <sc> <laughs> You know, I yes, yes I know what you. I, know I what emphasize there. I'm just gonna give up. I emphasize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you comfortable? With, are you are you gonna be comfortable talking about the sex part? I mean, we ain't talking fine. about like positions and like details, but just like the 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 topic and things surrounding it. Just making sure. For, yeah. For HR purposes. Uh, <laughs> well, who's HR? I'll be damned. The audience. I'll be damned. Oh. I'll be damned. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> Let me hit this music. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Rob, host of From My Experience Podcast, and you already know I got the co-host this with the most is Erica in the building. Hello. Yeah, we 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 gonna be mushy again. We say we weren't gonna be mushy, and then we were like, wait, there's more mush. Let's get all this mush out. We'll give y'all the leftover mush. Ew. Yeah. So it's kind of pervy. <laughs> wait, no. <laughs> HR, give you the HR, leftover HR. Mush. You know what? I ain't doing this with you. How y'all doing out there? Y'all feeling good? Have y'all been promoting positivity? Have you been taking care of yourselves physically, mentally, and financially? I hope so. We gonna get into a couple of things, man. All right. Do you have a Valentine's? Ah! Ugh, I hate that adjust these levels a little bit more but i adjusted the levels of the sound effect i heard it you heard what it was like wow 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 and then it did the breakdown you heard what to the song you heard the song i heard that last part wow 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 and then it did like a little breakdown you heard like, do, do you hear do, this do, 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 do. no but you hear the end i heard that part yeah I told you, it, on my end, it sounds like a chopped and screwed remix. I don't like it. We're going to have to fix that. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're this is uh, Feel Some Type of Way Part 2. Mm. If you did not listen to Part 1, funny enough, Erica, that is like one of my most favorite episodes of all time. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've listened to it. I'm on my third listen. Um, because I think, I think it's because... Those types of conversations, I can't have with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like, you're a safe space for that. Jessica's a safe space for that. And I don't know too many... I can't think off the top of my head too many people I could really talk to about that on that level because, like, my other close friends are already married and stuff like that, and yeah. <laughs> their mindsets have shifted. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it right there. <laughs> Shout out to all my married friends out there. Yeah. Yes, I'm still living in La La Land. Don't judge me and don't hate. And don't wake up. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm that not... sounded so morbid, but I... like, don't wake up. Yeah. We know what you meant. <laughs> so, y'all, um, I don't want to do a sound check. I'll be damned. 
I'll be down. Yeah, we're gonna need some. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we gonna need we gonna need all the sound effects today. So if you have not listened to part one, go back. It's the last episode we just did. Go back and listen to part one for further context. But we talked about our insecurities and or fears surrounding dating and relationships, and we kind of just shot off the top of the dome because Erica and I have both been <laughs> <laughs> experiencing some things that have just brought up thoughts and feelings. And I was like, oh, we got to get some of this mush out. But uh, we got a part two right now. And we have a list. So <clears throat> I'll, we, we can tag team it. We can tag team. Uh, I'll, you, want to go, you want me to pick the first topic or you want to pick the first topic? You pick the first topic. And you know, I got to warm up to it. That's true. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna start with a deep topic. Uh oh. So, uh, yes. one of the things that is a bit, I'm I'm apprehensive about. I can, I need to learn to open up more with this. But falling in love with or getting used to their support, mm. the meaningful type of support, like for example. A small example. Uh, one of my last girlfriends, she she told me that she finds it hard to find space in my life because you're like you're so independent. You do everything for yourself, and <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So <laughs> I was working out, shout out to coach law, break my fifth law, check him out on Instagram, break my fifth law. He's been on the podcast. He's been on twice. I think he's been on twice. He has been on twice. Uh, my boy, Lawrence Inman, coach law. <laughs> I was doing his workout regimen, right? And I, you know, <laughs> I make smoothies for breakfast. And so my girlfriend at the time was like, you know, I can't, as you make it hard for me to find a place to fit in. So she was like, well, can I make your smoothie? <laughs> oh. so, <laughs> I let her make it. It was not the way I like it. <laughs> See, you were just looking for a problem. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. But <laughs> I was like, what is this? Yo, so the thing was. It, so this is the lesson that I got out of that, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. I know me. I'm peculiar and particular when it comes to like the smallest, weirdest things. But a majority of the stuff, I really don't care. Mm-hmm. Like when I go in the grocery store, 80% of what I buy can be store brand. I don't care. I buy the same stuff all the time anyway because I'm on a diet. <clears throat> but I, I'm not like... Super brand loyal when it comes to everything. For example, like my mom got pissed off today because I bought peanut butter and she was like, I better like this peanut butter. I'm like, yo, it's peanut butter. She was like, I only like Peter Pan peanut butter, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, I gave you the option to put stuff on a grocery list and you put peanut butter. Okay. How am I supposed to know the specifics? So um, I'll be surprised if it tastes different, but I'm not that person. But anyway, like one of the things in my head about this smoothie situation after she made it. She she wanted me to show her how to make it first, how I made mm. it, because she wanted to make it like I make it. And when I made it, she judged my smoothie. Oh. Now, I'm talking about I've been drinking this smoothie for like five weeks. Like, <laughs> so clearly I like it and I know the way I want it made. And she was like, you don't like your, she was like, I mean, yours is thick. Like, you don't like yours like a little more. And I'm just like, didn't you A ask- runny smoothie? Yeah, but I'm like, didn't you ask me how I want it? What your opinion don't belong here right now. And that right there is why I get a little reluctant and afraid of the support. Um, that's one because it's like, yo, I've been doing this, this works, this is how I like it. If you're going to if I'm gonna let you in to take over a piece of this, mm-hmm. I need you to emulate me. Or like I don't need to, for lack of a better word, it shouldn't have it shouldn't be a whole thing, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. you know, you like your your lumpy smoothie or your thick smoothie? Hey, that's the way you drink it. Great. All right, how much I put in? Great. Done. 
Like, mm-hmm. I don't need the judgment. And this this wasn't, I mean, I'm. it wasn't a bad thing. We didn't argue over it, but it's just something I find funny, which is why I laugh. But the other side to that for me is what happens when I become dependent or reliant on that support and I mm-hmm. really hand it over and I really take my hands off Oof. of it and I really let it go and then you slack in or we break yeah. up. Or, you know, and it's like, oh, it's gone now. No, it's gone. Like, I don't like that. So that that's one of my uh, insecurities. And because you brought that up, it really, it kind of like brought up like all these past memories that I've had in like my previous relationships where I've had both sides of it. And even like now, I really, hmm, I really operate as if it's just me on my own forever. I do. (laughs) Me too. Me too. (laughs) Because I feel like I always get let down when I put that type of trust in someone. I feel like I always get let down because I feel as if people don't treat me how I treat them. And I have so such high expectations where if you don't meet them, I'll just be like, oh, it's okay. And I'll make excuses for where you fall short every time and try to it's like people if they're gonna meet you halfway they're gonna meet you halfway don't try to force and shove them them to get to the line practically Mm -hmm. and so i recently i've not i didn't get cussed out but almost got cussed out for basically (laughs) not allowing someone to help me (laughs) uh i don't like that but go ahead but i'm like it wasn't like yeah it it was something that wasn't brought to my attention that I did. And I was just like, huh. I was like, I guess I do do that. If someone's like, oh, do you need help? Nope. I got it. I don't I don't want anyone to help. I'm a strong black woman. Leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. I say move. And hit the little shoulder on them and everything. <laughs> so it was brought to my attention. And I think it may, it took a time. It's it took all time. It took me some time to sit down and think about it. I'm like, okay, why are you like this? Okay, you've been like this because every time that you try to give that to someone, they kind of shut you down. And for my last relationship, there was no support. So I was really just all in it by myself because mm. I was just like, you know, this is fine. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm doing things that I love and mm. I want that support. And when I go with these high hopes and these big puppy dog eyes because I'm like oh my gosh do you want to see what I made no I was like all right you got it cool (laughs) yo you've been traumatized and this is not funny but it's funny it it is funny because it's like okay cool so it's like I see why like I don't know I see basically why that is such a big insecurity for me and also hearing it for you Especially because you're letting someone in and take a little bit of that control that you think you have on something. Yep. And you're giving them that trust to operate. And it's almost like a machine. It's like, if I sub out and you sub in, will will it still make the production line, basically? Oof. That, oof. You, oh, oh, oof. I'll be down. I'll be down. Yeah. It's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is predicated on past experiences, but also when you're single for a very long time, you're used to doing everything. You're used to doing everything. Yeah. The the other thing too is, uh, and I take this into heavy consideration because I've dated women who feel the way that you feel. Uh, I make sure, well, I'm like this anyway. If I... If I offer to do something for you or I do something for you, 99.9% of the time is because I want to. Exactly. It's not about making you feel a way or blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, I can help here. Let me step in here and do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Like, that's just, and that's one of my love languages too. I just do that. So I definitely feel where you're coming from. And I also have that empathy and knowing that, oh, this is coming from a place because I've been to that place and I act the same way, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, I, I'm patient with it because I'm like, eventually that person will open up and say, hey, can you do this or can you do that when they're comfortable with you? But you have to earn that trust. So I feel you. Yeah. Mm. And it kind of it kind of ties into, I'm reading through it. Like one 
getting used to the support oh my gosh I I do not like getting just like how you said where you're with someone and you finally have that support and you're like oh my gosh they um I don't want to say gas me up but like they they pour into me I pour into them pour into me pour, pour into them and then it's gone and then you're just like <laughs> They're like, do I pour into myself now? How do yeah. I do that? Yes, because it'd it be gone instantly to all of it. It'd be instantly. Or it's like a switch. It's like that moment where someone like decides that they're going to check out the relationship and you can feel the energy is just like gone and everything before it gets to that breakup point. And it's like, you're not supporting me like how you was three weeks ago type mm. of thing. Mm. And so that's my other thing where it kind of like does like a little signal off in my head and then the alarm goes off. It's like the episode of SpongeBob where you got like 50, 11 of them up in his head yep. and everything. And you're just like, oh my gosh, now I got to pull out manual instructions, everything, go to my default settings where I'm taking care of myself. <laughs> the <laughs> default settings, I'm taking care of myself. That's nuts, yo. That's funny, like, the default settings. It's like you just start scrambling, trying to prepare yourself for like what's going to happen and how you're supposed to be like, okay, by the time that you guys come to the point where it's like, all right, we need to go our separate ways. Because it's like, once you feel that little like slight in the energy, you're just like, all right, all right. Like <laughs> me, I, I'm good luck. You gotta catch me because I'm taking off. I'm s so. <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna want to date us after listening to this. <laughs> Last, lastly, on that too, the funny thing is, <clears throat> the other reason it's hard for me to really do that is because I have an ebb and flow like with this <laughs> podcast we do whatever we want basically like but if I were to like I don't know let's say I'm dating someone oh I want to help you with the podcast and I like give her yeah. <laughs> and I like let's say I <laughs> <laughs> let's say I give her like a duty assigned or linked to the podcast instinctively i'm gonna be harder on her than anybody else than myself than you because yeah. the relationship is different and you asked you no know what i'm saying forced you to. no one forced you you asked and i, I know it's unfair because like shoot sometimes i'll text you and be like man we ain't recording i got a headache like or i, I just don't feel like recording i'm tired oh like, i'd be fine with it right but that's the <laughs> thing like when when and that's the other thing like when it's on you and you're doing it, none of that matters. You don't have to worry about mm -hmm. attitude, none of that. And you, you're you comfortable, you're more comfortable with the outcome and the decision because you made it and you're in control of it. But if it was like, all right, we about to record, you know, send me the text or send me the, uh, the headlines. Oh, I didn't do it today. I'm going to be mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be mad because you asked to do this and you're not fulfilling what you said you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But- you just brought it into a whole nother insecurity <laughs> with that. <laughs> what is that? That is my biggest, it's an insecurity and a pet peeve. And I said that all up in the mic for a reason, for effect. Because, <laughs> because I cannot stand. And I know my parents have heard me rant about this in all my other relationships. And we gonna talk about family influence in a minute. But before we do that, <laughs> I cannot stand when no one provoked you, no one asked you to. You volunteer, you volunteer as tribute to do something. I'm gonna be watching you until you do it. <laughs> that is the biggest pet peeve of mine. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Actions <laughs> and words. I'll be down, I I'll be down. Nothing grinds my gears more than someone being like oh i was gonna do this oh i'm gonna do that when <laughs> it be me so bad because all it does is make me feel as if you're gonna fall through whenever i need you to come and be there for me you know it i don't mm. know why i feel like that and i see it and i'm just like if it's something and granted yes it could be something small but if it's a pattern with you yep. where you're like, oh, I'm going to do this. And it could be 
um, it, it doesn't even have to be anything relating to me. It could just be you saying that you're going to go and do something for yourself. And if you don't do it, and I'm just asking, and it's like, oh, no, nah, I ain't get a chance to get to it. I'd be like, okay, so you, all right. And the next day, I'm like, hey, did you ever get to man, uh, blah, 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 blah. You ain't got, you're not going to do nothing? It's like, no, and I can't stand when people tell you things unprovoked because I have a, a qualm with a lot of old friends for doing that to me a lot, where it's like, hey, girl, we're going to go and do this and such and such, you know, just help celebrate, da, 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 da. Crickets. Mm. Whenever it's time to actually show up and do it, mm. crickets. And it lets me know you can't even show up for yourself. How are you going to be able to show up for me? I'll be day. I'll be day. I'll be day. I'll be. 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 If you don't do it for yourself, you ain't gonna do it for me. Man, black men, are you listening? This is a, a young sister saying this. Young sister saying this. Credibility goes a long way. That that speaks to yes. your credibility. Um, I'm the same way. Like I, I'm like that across the board relationships whatnot i know what i can depend on you for and exactly what i can't and the only way you can elevate within that spectrum for me is is for you just to start doing stuff like i gotta see it like i exactly there's some people like yeah man you know i, I can be there at 5 30 and then i'll look turn around like yeah man nah, i ain't leaving till 6 30 because i already know you're gonna be late you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like i it, it's like that so Ooh, I feel you on that. Yeah, don't, don't, Ugh. yeah, don't, don't be out here saying I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, and then when you no don't. no one doing it, no one's saying you're going to do it. You just saying it just unprovoked in the corner of a room. Mm. I'm going to do this. When do I have to give you a deadline? Because then I'm just like, I don't trust you. You're not going to show up for me when I need you to, if it's going to be for something this minimal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Build Agreed. the Rappaport. Build the credibility. Did you just say Rappaport? Yup. I'll be damned. All it's right. Fa <laughs> you ain't right, yo. Family influence? You want to go there? Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Woo, because this also pops up a lot in my Woo. previous relationships. <laughs> Yo, you are on fire today. Woo! <laughs> you have oof and woo, yo. That's hilarious. <laughs> I only speak in sound effects at this point. But, man, family influence. Uh, okay. I know for me, and this is probably terrible, but I will definitely, if I'm feeling you, if I'm liking you, if we're dating, my parents are going to hear something. Hello. Keep talking. I can't. No, sorry. I, no. Y'all can't hear it, but my mom is downstairs talking, and I, my mic is sensitive. So I'm upstairs with my door closed. Her voice is traveling from the living room up the stairs to the back of the house, through my door into, into my mic. I can hear her whole conversation. Y'all can't hear it because I'm looking at the meter on my mic and it's not moving, but it's distracting. Mm. All I was gonna say was sorry. Family. No, you're fine. Family. It pops up on both sides. Uh, if oh. I'm dating you, no, like I've seen it happen where it was good at one point and then it went sour on me. Mm. Um, where, <laughs> where if I'm lucky, if I like somebody, if I'm talking to someone, if I'm dating, I'm sorry. My parents are gonna hear tad bits in here and there. Well. They're gonna hear. Not the worst of the worst. Like, they don't hear nah, everything. I'm kidding. That That's natural. Oh, I think yeah. that's healthy, actually, to an extent. Yeah. I was like, and that's the thing, is I I don't tell them everything that's going on because I want to keep stuff private. Just like how you don't tell your friends everything that's going on in your relationship. Absolutely not. And so it's like, I like to keep certain things private, but just like a little here and there, a little small talk type of level of everything. But... I'll never forget when it happened to me where the moms, the moms basically had so much to say about me and influence, basically mm. kind of like I could see where the influence was going 
in the relationship just a little bit uh hated it because it's like i can't once someone drops and plants that little seed it's just gonna sprout yeah and you're just gonna look for different pieces of evidence here and there to kind of support that claim so that it can grow into this big old tree of just nothing but i've seen it happen to it's happened to me i've seen it happen to other people and i try not to let that happen um to anyone that I'm dealing with on my end. So that's why I limit everything. And that's such a big insecurity because I know there are a lot of mama's boys out there and mama comes first, I get it. But hey, if we ever progressed into something serious and there's a ring on my hand, I am the number one lady. (laughs) I can't, I can't do it. I'm not a mama's boy for the record, ladies. Uh, <laughs> nice drop. It. I'm just saying, I'm I'm not. Uh, yeah, I oof. You know, they don't want you to take their sons away. Da, 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 da. Don't be no heartbreaker. That's an interesting thing. I'm not a mama's boy, so I can't relate. But and my AC came on. <laughs> It's not supposed to be on. Hold on. Pause. All right, we're recording again. Go ahead and do your... <laughs> what the hell were you doing while I was gone? Go ahead and do it, yo, so I can laugh. <laughs> I say, during this interlude, you will hear from yours truly. The SAT word of the day is clavicle. Keep your clavicle moisturized. Thank you. I'll be down. As I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted by my heat kicking on, as it was supposed to, and as it was set, you have to be careful with the mom thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Years ago, in my 20s, I've already had the I'm a grown-ass man conversation. Thankfully, I was able to have that conversation with my dad before he passed away, and I had it with my mom somewhere in the somewhere between graduating college and I don't know, but I had that, you have to, you got to draw the line in the sand Mm -hmm. so that they respect you as an adult. Uh, because most of the time that takes a marriage and children, they need to basically see you as them to be like, Oh shit, my kid is grown. Some parents. Right. Uh, but the other thing too, is if I'm in a serious relationship, my goal is marriage. And I need to give you a preview. In my mind, this is how I think. If I'm serious about being with you and marrying you, I need to. This is the preview stage. This is a sample of what life with me will be like. Now, you will have a certain level of privileges, and there are going to be times where I make sure that you're comfortable and you're okay, and everybody else can be mad and pissed off because you need to know that I can put you first i am capable of putting you first you need to have examples of that so that when there are times you don't come first before the marriage when there are times you don't come first you can't ever say well you never you don't ever no 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 i do um also you have to know when your parents (laughs) oof oof hold up i'll be damned you have to know when your parents are being genuine and when they like doing some of the fuckery okay they do this yes we see i'll be damned we've seen it in movies and stuff like that sometimes they they meddle a little bit i love my mom she she tries it but i already know what it is and i just ignore it and i'm like stay out my business like i literally that's what i say uh because it is your business right and it is your relationship uh, and that that's my main thing with my my relationships. Like the one person's opinion outside of my relationship that mattered the most was my grandmother, who is no longer here. And I had that conversation with her, and she was like, "As long as she loves you and treats you well, I don't care who you end up with, black, white, mm-hmm. orange, purple, green. That was it for me. Everybody else, you know what, can kick rocks. Because yeah. once she said that, that's it. You know. Yeah. Um. So." I say all that to say, y'all, just be, that's a very sensitive thing. And you can really change the trajectory of your relationship with that. Because I've, 
like you said, <clears throat> I've experienced it as well. I've seen where the women I'm dating are so attached to their family and so connected to their family that it pulls on us. Mm-hmm. Like your mama, or your daddy or somebody, when they get on your nerves, I got to pick up the pieces. Or mm-hmm. whenever they call, you feel like you got to run and jump. Or whenever they call and you tell them no, they put you on a guilt trip. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, you got to rein, you got to rein this in. Especially at our big age now, I'm almost 40. So my tolerance for that stuff is like zero. I'm like, oh, you ain't had that I'm grown conversation yet. Oh, they still making you feel like you need them. They putting that thing on you which links back to our first topic doing it for your damn self it was like yeah. mm-hmm. no i got this and my thing is this a real parent that loves you and cares about you won't take offense to you standing up for yourself and they won't not be there when you actually need them just because you took that stance for yourself that says a lot about them if they threaten you with oh well you think you grown and if you need me don't ask not- mm, you say that to me you yeah no no, no, no. Shouldn't be like that. Like, we grown. We have our own lives. We out here trying to figure things out just like you did when you were younger. So why are you putting this extra pressure on me and trying to make these decisions for me and causing controversy and tro- turmoil in this relationship when relationships are already hard? You already know yeah. this. So Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And stop asking mm. everybody when they're going to get married, y'all. I got one cousin that did uh. I got one cousin that do. I love, I love you, Shanna, but that one cousin, every time. Who's the young lady in your life? Uh, Am I going to hear some wedding bells? You know how much a wedding costs? You know how much an engagement anytime. ring costs? Yeah, like. Them Thanksgiving dinners and family reunions, and they're like, who's the special man? I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> not not if not unless someone's attached to you you know how we yeah do you know how we do in our community oh man i was like all right who made the cheesecake <laughs> start changing the conversation <laughs> on them. that's patty's cheesecake <laughs> patty dropped another uh something too i think she dropped like chicken and waffles or something yeah i'm not gonna eat not nothing against oh. her but i i yeah. What do I look like going and buying chicken and waffles? Out the freezer section. Lord. Exactly. Her pies are good. In Walmart? Though. Her pies and peach cobbler are top tier. I'll be looking at all types of crazy Black History Month if I do that. All right, next topic. <laughs> Shout out that Black History Month. You got the Black History Fact of the Day, right? Erica hmm. and I are both black. That is your black... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> we we got black grandparents and black parents. We is all black around here. Actually, you know what? <clears throat> they posted something at work about black history, and I actually have it. Um, I'm gonna I I'll, I'll do that before we end. Uh, next topic. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Were you finished with family influence? Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't want to keep beating the dead horse. These are just insecurities, y'all. All right, let me see. All right, let's get to the juiciness. Sex. Uh-oh. Let's talk about... <laughs> no, I'll be the dang. I'll, 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 I'll be dang. I'll be dang. The juiciness. The juiciness. Sex. All right, we already had the conversation with HR. So, um, for me, this is a, this is a, a problem. Mm-hmm. This is not a problem. This is an obstacle. I don't perform well with condoms. Without condoms, I'm a fucking superstar. These aren't my words. (laughs) So, (laughs) and I had someone who didn't believe me. The first time we did it, we had a condom. It was, eh, I couldn't perform like I wanted to. And I told her, I was like, it's the condom. I can't feel nothing. It's, it's. God ain't make it make us make us to have a piece of plastic in between us. He didn't, right? That next time without it, <laughs> yeah. So that that's something I've always had to navigate, right? Um, don't have any kids out here. Never had an STD, STI, none of that stuff. Because I'm a big proponent of. Oh well, if you're comfortable with doing this. 
and I'm comfortable with doing this. Let's go get these tests, all these tests, all of them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Get your blood work done. Let's exchange this paperwork. Oh, you good? Oh, I'm good. All right, let's go. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, that's. I don't know what to do about that. I really don't have. There's no solution. No. Uh, also, ooh, hold on. You 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 go first before I talk about this next. The next one is very. <laughs> Nah, for real. The next one is I don't know, but go ahead. What what are you, what are your what are your thoughts on that? I hmm. Because I do gloves mm-hmm. all the way through. So, I guess I do see that as an occurrence. My biggest thing with it is more so I don't like the I don't know how to describe it, but like the talking before wearing it's like, oh, how many people have you been with? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I hate that part. <laughs> we That is the worst part because it makes everything so awkward. <laughs> yeah. God, are we gonna have this Expectations go up the roof. It's like all everything's just ah. It does. I don't like that. I, that whole, how many have you been, like, so, I now, shit, I don't even know how to start. I do ask questions about sexual history, but more so, what type of experiences have you had? What do you Mm -hmm. like? So I can kind of gauge, because I mean, I'm going to explore and discover anyway, but I like to kind of gauge where you are, so I'll make sure I don't give you too much too soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of like I want because typically the first time is okay at least average then they're willing to explore more but a lot of times people are like one and done with you oh body count my so for people who discount body count and say oh it's immature blah 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 to me that's a 50-50 argument there's a bunch of nuances surrounding it but for me it comes down to this even if you're highly sexually active, there that means something. It's not about it being good or bad or you being a hoe or classifying you as a person or grading you or rating you, but it's like, are you like this because you have some type of trauma and this is how you release and this is this may be an unhealthy habit or do you just like having a lot of sex? Mm-hmm. And then... The, the next thing becomes, well, if this has been a habit before me or this is how you like to get down, are you going to be okay with a sexual partner versus many? Mm. Are you ready and able to make that transition? That's what that conversation, if I would ever go there, that's what that's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. Not, oh, you slept with 20 dudes, ill you a hoe. It's like, what's up? Because like, I've been cheated on with someone and... Based on what I discovered, I'm like, oh, you like, you telling me one thing, but it look like you throwing this box everywhere. <laughs> so it's like, and I know you had daddy issues because you told me, but you didn't tell me what they were, but you told me. So I'm like, and then kind of out. Right. Yeah. So when we kind of get into the conversation, now I find out you got daddy issues and this is one of the things you do. You want the attention from men. So it comes out like this, but now you've ruined this relationship one, you put my health at risk. Yeah. Two, you put my safety at risk. And people people overlook the safety part. Motherfuckers mm-hmm. out here are crazy. You yeah. got somebody... You got someone sleeping with you or messing with you. They know about you. They may or may not know about me, but you know what I'm saying? I don't know about them completely. Exactly. So, like, what if this... I don't know if you cheating and, you know, we out somewhere and you see this dude and he see me... He got one up on me because I don't know yeah. nothing about him or none of that, but he done been with you. He see you walking with me. He run up. I'm unprotected. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or what if he like secretly madly in love with you and start stalking you and then see me and they're like, oh, this guy. Now my car messed up and like whatever, whatever could happen. So that's what I mean when I say my health and safety at risk. But I digress. What that? But to your point, yeah, the pre-sex conversation, the sex talk, I, I think it's a... <clears throat> it's 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 an important conversation, but you got to mm-hmm. navigate it the right way, ladies and gentlemen. You yeah. re- you really do. Um, and 
Or else you just kill everything. You kill everything. And, I mean, you should have vetted the person before you got to that point anyway. Exactly. Like, to me, that says, if you're that invested in that conversation, how much do you really like them? It must be a lot. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, uh, it's probably nine times out of ten is best not to ask that question. I don't care if I get asked that question. My body count ain't super high anyway. Um, and most women don't believe me when I tell them anyway. I still can't even remember a number. I think it's still less than ten, actually. It's like eight or something like that. But, um because I've been in relationships most of the time. So yeah. it, it don't bother me, but I the number again it's not the number, it's like what's what's my, what's the behavior, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's 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 what it is for me. So um <laughs> I use gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the other thing did you have anything else you want to say first before I get into my super sensitive topic and scary topic? Uh just that I agree with you on the health and safety part, especially when I found out that I was cheated on because I was like, dude, there could have been any any crazy chicken head mm-hmm. come up beating down on my door. I'll be down. Chicken I don't know. Down. Like, just like random stuff. I'm walking and everything and they're like, there she goes. She don't know that I did this, that, and the third. That I'm part. Like, that's the, like, don't embarrass and I feel like that's the thing yeah. with the insecurity is don't embarrass me. Don't mm-hmm. have me out here looking stupid when you could just be honest, especially if we we are at that point and at that stage where it's like, if you're going to step out on someone, just be just let them know. Ain't, ain't no reason for you to be sitting here trying to guard your heart and your feelings when you ain't do it for them. That part. <laughs> so stand 10 toes on it. Yeah, and like, for me, listen, if you to a point where you feel like you need to cheat or you want to go outside of us, just break up with me. Like, exactly, I get over it eventually. Um, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. I, Rather I'll than respect, finding out. Right, I'll respect you a lot more. And hell, I may even spin the block because that, that builds trust. Like, I might be mad, I might not like it, I might not understand it, but you didn't put my health or safety at risk and you were honest and you respected me enough to let me go so you can go do your thing. If more mm-hmm. people did that, I think they'd be surprised at the results. But Exactly. So the other thing... When I was younger, my sex drive was really high. I would say high, maybe not really. I don't know how to describe it. I liked having sex a lot, but I was in relationships. And we was having a lot of sex. But... Ooh. Since those younger relationships, like, the relationships, actually, uh, I haven't had a relationship at those frequencies since. And so now I'm wondering what it'll be like. I'm wondering, like, how well our sex drives will match, I guess, um... And it's been so long since I've really connected on that level. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder if I still have that. Um, or will it be lower or whatnot. So that's something I'm actually curious about. Because I don't be out here in these streets. Because there's too much stuff float- <laughs> floating around. And I don't need I don't need a child right now. So uh, And my goodies are special. So uh, that that is something that's like in the back of my mind. I'm like, hmm. What is our sexual compatibility going to be like? And like, yeah. So that's just something I definitely wonder about. Because I think about my relationships and how it was. And I'm like, eh, I'm hoping it'll be like those. But we'll have to see. I don't think it would be bad if the person that you're in a relationship with, if one, you're attracted to them. I think there will always be compatibility from that. And also, it depends on how deep your conversations go Mm -hmm. and also how well like-minded you guys are and i think from there the chemistry just flows right off the bat i don't think that's something that you should worry too much about it's in the back of my mind it is it's gonna be there i'll talk to you more i'll talk to you more off air yeah because i can't get i get the juicy details you do uh (laughs) (laughs) uh all right. Uh, anything else about sex? Nah, that's it. That sex has actually been 
a very strong part of all my relationships, actually, and it's actually caused conflict, interestingly enough. Hmm. Except for in one relationship. Hmm. First relationship, she felt like we was having sex too much. I mean, we was in college, so it was like every time I saw you, I was like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> But that was nice. I mean, you know, we used to go to Waffle House afterwards. Oh, Waffle House. We spent a lot of time <laughs> together. So like, we was like in a relationship, like on campus. Like everybody knew we was together. So it wasn't nothing crazy. Um, it's those where you practically just every day glued. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I need to move on. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> good time. Mm. Cheeks. Uh, is your t- <laughs> I'll be down. Here, will, here, will. Here, will, here, here, will. It's your turn. Okay. Hmm. We might have to do a part three. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because the way that I haven't even gotten through this list, and I was getting ready to combine like all three that I've been thinking about. So I'm about to, I'm going to just throw them at y'all. Just throw action. Okay. One. Being cut off, and I think having these insecurities turn into pet peeves, but I mean, they go hand in hand. Being cut off as you're talking about something and they talk about something with a completely different subject. Oh, I'm shutting myself up completely. I say, you you ain't gonna hear anything come out of my mouth ever again. One, that because I never realized how I'll I'm a jibber jabber. I, I I be gibbering and I be jabbering. I'm a chatterbox. I get it. But if you can't just sit and listen, or if you're going to cut me off, it better be something good. If I'm sitting here talking to you about, and it, I don't even care if it's like one of those where I'm ranting and you try to like cut me off to like do something to like cheer me up or whatever, or change the subject because it's a little too, too negative. Oh, I'm side eyeing you. I'm not only am I side eyeing you, I'm thinking of how I'm gonna mush you later. I'm just gonna just mush your whole face because Why are you violent? It's not violent. I'll be damned. It's just it's just like you imagine like being like talking about something and all it does is it comes across as if you don't care or if you just don't wanna like listen to me. You just want me to like sit on the couch and just be mute, like just shut up. Like almost and maybe this is, mm, it probably is a deep insecurity because this is probably where it stems from is the whole like women should be seen and not heard. So that's what it gives when, when a guy does that to me, especially if we're like in a romantic <laughs> type of relationship. That's a deeper trauma there. Hold up. You yeah. might need to unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> we need why. to be seen and not heard. Where are we that, that's where they- it, that's legit where it'll come from because then I'll just like, it's one of those moments where like everything drops and you just zero in on the person. Like, especially if I'm just talking about my day and you're like, yeah, I had a grilled cheese for lunch. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Not I had a grilled cheese for lunch, cutting you off. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so when they show you that they're blatantly not interested in what you're saying. Yes. I ain't... <sighs> I don't like that. That is the biggest thing. And yes, it's an insecurity. And it's also a big pet peeve of mine. But they go hand in hand. I had a hard question for you. Okay. What are we supposed <laughs> to do when we really don't care? What y'all are talking You're not supposed about? to let me know. You, you, we got to only... just take it? Yeah. Because... I'll be down. I'll, 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 be, I'll be down. I'll be down. Because nine times out of ten, the people who have done that to me, they could be rambling of a storm about something I do not care about. Not only did I zone out and think about what I had for lunch, I'm thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch the next day. Or I'm thinking about, am I going to eat breakfast? What am I doing? So it's like just common courtesy. I, I just don't tell that person because, I mean, you could tell them jokingly when they're not talking about that particular subject right then and there like maybe later on after you guys have like talked whatever and everything you could be like hey so and just bring it up like you could bring it up jokingly whatever and i'm like okay yeah i'll keep that in mind (laughs) 
And y'all could just like giggle, chuckle, snort, laugh about it, giggle, whatever. Chuckle, snort. Wow. <laughs> but don't say like it's like the equivalent of you talking and then someone yawning as you're talking. I'm like, you know what? What what have I got to yawn? No, like the obnoxious ones, oh. like mm. like yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I mush. Just mush you. I'll be damned. Do you actually mush people? I attempt to. So, no, dead ass. Like, <laughs> no, dead ass. Dead ass. I'm going to help you out. I'm, I'm going to help you out. For real. For real. This takes emotional maturity. Mm-hmm. And it takes friends. So, mm -hmm. I ask, like, if I know I want to talk about something that she might not particularly give a fuck about, I ask. I'm like, hey. Like, I feel a type of way about this. Do you feel like hearing about this? If not, it's fine. But I, yeah. when I say that, I mean it. So I give her the option to let me know that she's going to be attentive and listen before I just go into a rant. Because I have friends that I can talk to about this stuff. Like, I think it's a lot of pressure to put on one person to absorb and sit and just listen to and take in everything especially things that aren't in their wheelhouse especially things that they don't relate to especially things that i know in my heart of hearts that they don't give two fucks about that's not to me that's not fair like if i want to talk about gaming my girl's probably unless she's a gamer which well, she should be because that's what i want but that's that's never going to be a deep dive conversation because i know it's just gonna be i'll keep it short but you, <laughs> Erica, looking at me like, shut up. I, I, so, <laughs> I, I, I agree to an extent, but I also don't because what? if if you are with someone and you guys are here, like you guys are here, the audience, y'all can't see, but my hands are together. Oh They're like God. here and everything. And I feel like it's just the effort of it all is making the effort to yes it may not be something in your wheelhouse it may not be something that particularly interests you but you should be open to it because you see how this is very interesting to your partner you know and you want to just be a part of that world for a second so that's where i'm like if you're asking me something and i'm over here on my laptop doing whatever yeah. and everything and i try to bring you in yeah i'm gonna like see if you're gonna get your toe wet but <laughs> it's like if you if you're my partner you should want to know like certain things or you shouldn't basically be so shut off from the same my wheelhouse i'm not really that interested in it because all it shows to me is like okay so you don't care about my interests what do you care about what i do for you I think <sighs> that's where the slippery slope is. I don't think it's slippery slope. I think like with my method anyway, it works for me because my expectations are different. But two, mm -hmm. they say yes sometimes. Like it's mm -hmm. not like I give them the option because sometimes honestly, like even me, like I'm, I again, empathy. Sometimes I don't be wanting to hear that shit. And like I've had to tell my girl, like, I know you really want to talk about this. Now's not a good time for me, but let's do this like later. Like, let me finish doing this. So let me finish wrapping my head around this so I can give you my undivided attention. But I also, that'd be perfect. But also, but you have to give them the choice. You if you ambush them with the conversation, <laughs> then <laughs> they don't have a choice. And everyone is not doesn't have the level of emotional intelligence needed to say, hey babe, can you wait a second? Like, that came with years of experience. Don't ask none of my exes about <laughs> what I'm talking to you about now because they would be like, that nigga, they, he, he was rude. And I was. But I had to learn, like, oh, yeah, that's what that feels like. <laughs> I, won't, I won't ever ambush the person. It's just if you ask me about my day, you, you don't know what you're going to get, okay? And also... If you are talking to me at any time, if you know me, if any, if you know me, you know I ramble, okay? I gibber, I jabber, I do the whole long story short, and it was never a short story to begin with, okay? Same. I will give you a play-by-play, -play, details, outfits, everything, timestamps. So, 
that's that's the only part where it's like if you know this about someone just be be mindful of what you ask don't be like so tell me how was your day oh boy i'm gonna tell you how my day was and you didn't really care because then i'm just like all right man all right i guess I, it's just like sometimes you just want to have that talk and even then if it starts off i know for me when I come home and I'm talking to my parents and everything, like, how was your day? And I'm just like, <laughs> my day. And I start giving them the long spiel, whatever, and everything. And they're asking me questions. But then it's like your mood turns, like your mood changes. And then mm. you don't even care about it. You wrap the story up. It's just like, I just wanted to be heard. That's it. Mm. It's almost like a little kid. It's basically almost like a little kid. It's like you just want to be seen and heard. Not just seen, but you want to be seen and heard. Uh that okay. That that's very valid. Um being heard. Everyone wants to be heard. It does feel good to be heard. It does. Even when it's not that big of a deal, you just want to be just have someone acknowledge that yes, I've heard you. Thank you. That's all I wanted. That, that's legit. I was like, I'm sitting here screaming into the void. I just wanted someone to be like, I, I see you. I hear you. <laughs> and then I'll shut up. <laughs> Five hours later, she'll shut up, guys. Um... Yup. <laughs> After I gave you everything, every scenario possible. She said, I gibber. I jabber. I do all the things. I'd be doing that too, man. I... I, I I used to cut off my ex-girlfriend a lot, yo. Um, oh. And she used to like, like, you just cut me off. And I used to like... <laughs> I feel her though. But I used, to, I, I used to get cut off. It wasn't to change the subject either. It was like, sometimes I get so excited in the conversation and I miss... Let me see. I miss read like a pause for a You're Done oh uh, especially if you've been talking for a minute you know what i'm saying i'm like oh my turn oh no it's not uh. like double dutch and <laughs> jump rope don't slap me on my damn shin so no, you gotta raise your hand yeah so i, I got better at it um but i <laughs> i distinctly remember her saying you just cut me off so I just... <laughs> <laughs> so when you brought this one up i laughed to myself and i was like eh, i remember that guy yes i will crack up I'll, I'm fine if you cut me off and it's something pertaining to the conversation. Then I'm like, okay, you're interested. Sign me up. But if you're telling me like, hey, yeah, I, I went to the bathroom. My stomach was upset. Did I ask? This, this is not your soapbox. This is mine. Step off. Wow. So, you and your one-sided conversations. It's not one-sided. It's just like, if I usually sit I usually will sit and listen to someone talk about whatever, even if it doesn't pertain to me or my interests and anything. So it's just, I, I really would love for someone to just do the same. Cause it's just like, just give and take, give and take. I, I tagged you in, go ahead, get on your soapbox, lay it all out on the sidelines. Go ahead. Now my turn. No. Oh, okay. I'll just sit here with my little pitchfork. You right. Being a good listener matters. Sometimes you, you do need the ability to listen. Um, I, yes. I, I, I didn't hit the I didn't hit the, the the sound effect, but you're right. You're right. Uh, there are times where you just need to shut up and listen. I think that's been the name of an episode on here. Uh, just really <laughs> shut up and listen because the person just needs to be heard. It's not about you and what you think and what you feel. They just need to know that a human being is hearing what I'm saying and I'm not crazy. So, I give you that one. Yes. The next one on my list. I'll be damned. Mm. Pick a good one. one. We we go, we gonna end it after this one because we had an hour. Oh, um, this is the one that happened a little off air, into air. Oh. Bringing up. <laughs> <laughs> like I, like I said, y'all. These insecurities and these pet peeves, they go together. They go together. <laughs> Will we ever uncover the deep thing? I don't know. Possibly. Never. But I'm, I was wondering how I was going to put this lightly, but I don't think there is. Bringing up 
on a regular basis. Okay. Okay. Bringing up friends of the opposite gender. Man. Man. When I said grind my gears, <laughs> oh my god! I can't gosh. talk about my homegirl, yo. You a hater? It's it's not even a be a hater. It's like it's one. Okay, we can bring him up. <laughs> Funny. Why you bring her up again? <laughs> Why you bring her up again? <laughs> now I'm here counting on my hand. I'm like, if you bringing her up in the span of a week, I don't know how many different times. I'm like, okay. Why are we here? Because it sounds, why do you feel the need to bring up this? And also if it's like the same friend, if you keep bringing up this same friend, the wheels are turning in my head because I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm not trying to be like that, but if it's the same person and you keep bringing them up and bringing them up and you're just, oh my gosh, they're so funny. Oh my gosh, they're so funny. It's like, Oh my gosh, do you have a crush? Do you, do you want to? <laughs> I was want... like, because it feels like we, you tried to put me in a competition with somebody else. Because it's like, what, what's going on? And only because I've had that happen. And maybe this is a little uncovering to the insecurity. I've had that happen where in one of my old relationships, Mm-mm. just all up and down the timeline, on the, and it goes back to the last episode. With social media, I see you active on social media. You ain't gonna text me back or just give me like, hey, I I don't really feel like talking right now. You know, get to it. Cool. But that is, you see... a liar. Cool. Yeah, if I, mean... I say that, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. It's, it's like okay. <laughs> You just said I have to listen to you. I wish I might tell my girl, yeah, I don't feel like talking to you right now. Hell no. I'm lying every time. I got a headache. I'm doing laundry. I'm putting a band-aid exactly. on my big toe. I'm going to the gym. I am <laughs> never telling her. I don't feel like talking to you right now. What? Because I will never I hear the end of that. I cannot stand like, <laughs> Especially when you're trying to... Maybe because like sometimes like I try to like dial back from feeling like like I'm like on edge or like ready to like go ready to go to war or something like that. What? Basically like I like picking and choosing my battles okay. type of thing. So where I would just like it would irk me and I'd be like you know what let me just let me just quiet you know let it whatever I'm gonna let them rock but. I cannot stand when, and it goes back to my previous relationships. If I, if you and I get into it, hey, all of a sudden, you, you and this one friend, y'all just talking up a storm. Y'all either talking up a storm, y'all in and y'all just commenting on each other's stuff. You bring them up all the time, and it, now the wheels are turning in my head because it feels as if. I'm a placeholder because you couldn't mm. get the friend. Mm. Mm. And that's what it comes across as. So that's one an insecurity and a pet peeve is bringing up the same friend. Now you can have friends of um, friends of opposite genders. Cool. I'm fine with that. But I, if I catch the pattern where you bring up the same friend, over and over and over again when I know you have more friends than just that one. <laughs> They're special. All it does, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm special. <laughs> They're a different kind I'm of your special. friend now. They're I'm different. your friend now. But they're a different kind of special. <laughs> but it's like... <laughs> hey, it's like a little a sensor. A sensor goes off where I'm just like... Eh. I was like, it kind of sounds like you... You actually wanted your friend, but you couldn't actually get your friend. So I'm here as a placeholder. That's right. what it comes across as. Well, maybe it's true. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe it's true. But Honestly. So <laughs> I've told this story here before. Can I tell you about the shirt, the purple dress shirt story? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna have me siding with somebody. I know that for a fact. If your friend was wearing your purple dress shirt, <clears throat> I, 
Well, first of all, let me be responsible with that. Uh, have I had? Hmm. Ah, I don't know. If I've had that as a full blown insecurity, but I do take note because I'm a big proponent of I trust you until you give me a reason not to. Like I, I am like I can't sit and worry about things that I can't control. I just pray about it and say, God, just reveal what needs to be revealed so I can get up out of here and keep me safe. Um, because I have, so I can't never say shit because I have a bunch of friends of the opposite sex. Like I, I mean you, Jessica. Mm-hmm. Like I could go down the list. So, uh, but. I do let them know, like, when I get in a relationship, they already know, actually, it shifts. Like, one of my closest, 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 closest friends, shout out to Anasha Swazi. She has been on here before. We're going to have her back soon. Uh, I feel like she's been on here twice. She has been on here twice. No. She's either been on here twice or I've been on her podcast or something like that. But anyway, uh, we're really tight, like. We used to hang out. We used to go to Applebee's and get two for 20 and laugh and blah, blah, blah. But whenever she got into a relationship, it would shift. And I might hear from her once, twice a month or something like that. And I never took it personal because I understand the dynamics. Most Mm -hmm. people are going to be suspicious. Most people are uncomfortable with it. I respect it. I'm not mad. I'm not, not upset. You communicate it. I get it because I do the same thing. It dies down. Like my homegirls, I'm not going to talk to you past a certain hour La la la, so on and so forth. I do let whoever I'm with know the women that I communicate with that are my friends and kind of like what the relationship consists of so that Mm -hmm. everything is out there at the beginning. But I'm also an introvert. So I only really talk to like three or four people a week and it's the same people. I do have a multitude of friends, but, but I never really talk to my friends about the other people anyway. Or my girlfriend about the other people every now and again I might. Like, I told one of my exes about, like, one of my close homegirls. And she would ask me about her more than I would talk about her. Because she was like, well, that's your really close friend, but you never talk about her. I'm like, yeah, she's my really close friend, but we're both introverts. And we only talk, like, once in, once or twice a month. So, <laughs> I don't talk to her a lot. So, I get where you're coming from. Because that can be intimidating. And that can be, like, it's like, you know, I... <laughs> yeah is he, is he really that funny like yeah <laughs> is he really I, that I funny is he so it. cool like and it's, yeah and i don't want to be in a and the thing is like you don't have beef with the friend you yeah. don't but it's like the, if the person that you're with they keep bringing it up bringing it up bringing it up and it's just like okay wait let me let me just sit back i'm like is there something else here like it may not be for your friend but do you have some feelings that you just never reach the surface all the way Mm. because especially if it's just also the just constant bringing them up it's like if you can't go one day without bringing them up are they single and that's the other thing if the friend's single that makes a difference and we're not trying to start shit and yes we do understand because i again i have deep long friendships with people non-sexual history um, and <clears throat> that does make a difference because yeah. when you get in a re- period, right? Male, female, doesn't matter. When you get in a relationship, your friends act different a little bit. They talk mm-hmm. to you different a little bit and some poke fun and some try to poke holes. So you do that. It's almost like the family thing. You gotta, gotta pay attention, yo. So that, that, that's valid. That's valid. Yes. That has to be one of the biggest ones because it showed me it's never an issue with a friend. It's never been an issue with a friend. It's more so how you introduce the situation. Just like how you said where you let everything out in the open yep. where they know let's, let's from get the get go. Yep. So when you see the phone ring and it say Erica, yeah. you should already know who it is. Hell, I don't answer yeah. it. Answer it and tell Erica I'll be there in a minute. Y'all talk for a minute. Like that. Yeah. It's like. If you say something out in the open, then it's like, okay, cool, good. I'm fine with it. But if it's like pulling teeth from you, trying to understand the dynamic and you're constantly bringing them up, yeah, I'm going to have an issue with it. And it's not with the friend, it's with you because why are we even 
looking at each other if you can't even figure out or at least approach this the right way mm. I was mm. like you're already setting it up for me to be <laughs> insecure mm. or not feel like I'm there with you because you're constantly your friend your friend so I have a question for you mm. I'm scared you should be because okay. <laughs> this is the insecure part this is what we have to learn mm -hmm. to do with these insecurities you got to speak up Oh yeah. Oh shit. What'd you say? Oh, this was like previous, like a previous. Previous. One. So what, what yeah. happened? What'd you say? Oh, I don't know. I said, how is it? You know that. That's how you started. No, I okay. didn't say that. I did say like we need to talk, basically. Oh because... hell no! When you start with we need to talk. I'll be because... damned. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. I'm, I'm gonna pause. I'm, I gotta pause you. I gotta pause you, <laughs> ladies. Ladies, y'all gotta find a different phrase besides "we need to talk." I don't care. Y'all got like to find either. something different. Y'all need to lie. Let's have dinner tonight. Um, I have something special. Y'all need to lie or something. Oh, we you need would be to ambushed. <laughs> and we need to talk, especially if we're not about to talk right now. Ruins my whole day. Because now I'm immediately thinking what I did now. I, when I say we need to talk, I at least give them the subject matter or an overview. Hey, we need to talk. No, it's not nothing negative, but such and such happened. I just wanted to share my thoughts with you about it. I like to let people prepare because we need to talk is still an ambush. Yeah, well, the, to set up this the scene for you. See, set up. See, you set people up when you're about to go ahead. <laughs> Yup, I sure do proud. I'll be damned. So, it was a birthday dinner for the friend, not the <laughs> friend, but a birthday dinner of a friend, okay. basically. I'm not really a part of the friend group. I'm the plus one. Man, we don't know you. Right? Yet. Right. We don't even like you yet. Rightfully so. I was like, that's right. I'm a stranger. It's cool. But granted, I don't know anyone. All I know is you because yeah. you brought me. Yeah. You sit, we go into the building and everybody's chit chatting away. You leave and you're chit chatting with everybody. I'm not introduced. I'm just standing. So Ooh. I'm a stranger. Relationship. So that over. was strike one. Yeah. Strike two. I'll be I'm, sitting, I'm sitting next to you, but all you're focused on and all the person that you are talking to is the friend. The, I'll be damned. The opposite gender friend. I'll be damned. I'm physically in the flesh right next to you. <laughs> I was like, well, golly, I must be invisible at this point. I'm physically in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rich. That is rich. I'm physically and in the flesh. <laughs> in the flesh. I'm like, I'm over here. I'm breathing. Someone asked me what Ignored. I wanted to drink. Oh, my God. Just straight. And all you're focused on and all that you have, the only person that you have spoken to this entire night is the opposite gender friend. He didn't do you like that. You exaggerating. No, it, it was like that. Did you, you can... ever get introduced? Mm -mm. No, I sat on my phone. I sat on my phone in poor service. So my phone was doing me dirty. I was on Twitter and no tweets were loading. I was just sitting there. So... <clears throat> and that's when I and the energy changed after that because I was just on the car ride back because I was just like oh, I, I don't want to do anything it was like there was plans to go back to so and so's house and watch games and everything I was like I don't want to do that just drop me off honestly drop me off and me tell you it's like yeah I don't really care for how tonight went I probably shouldn't have even gone don't invite me out if that's how it, I'm gonna be treated yeah especially if it's like I'm with you and I only said what I wanted to drink the entire night yeah so oof, let me pause you I like how this is going and I like you opening up because this gives me an opportunity to give my old man wisdom young men and young ladies but really young men because dang you was young how old was y'all Oh my gosh, I think I was like 19 when that happened. Yeah, so, oh shit, that's not really our demographic. But in case you're hearing this or you have a young <laughs> nephew or whatever, or cousin, sister, whatever, y'all, when you bring someone 
and you're the only familiar person, like y'all y'all need to be damn near Siamese. Y'all need to be Siamese twins. Like Hello. whenever I've brought a woman around my family, I never leave her. First of all, I know my family, so I'm not leaving you alone for too long <laughs> before you hear these embarrassing ass stories. But two, I understand how uncomfortable it can be. They talking to you, asking all these questions. You know I don't talk to them about you, but you may or may not remember what I told them. And then someone might have a funky attitude, and you don't know their mannerisms. You don't know, like so many things are going through yeah. your head. So I'm always there. Like <clears throat> I'm fixing your food. I'm asking you. I'm almost like too. What's the word? I don't know the word, but I'm like I'm in your face. Like, hey, you good? You hungry? The bathroom's oh, over there. Do you need something? Where to eat? they would something? think you're that you're clingy. Yeah, I'm like, I'm clingy the first few times just to make sure you're good until you get comfortable. Then you find, yeah. okay, this aunt loves me. That's the cool cousin. Oh, snap. Her and I both connected on it. Until you have a connection with that group, that person needs to be with you so that they're comfortable. But it also shows the people that, oh, like, they really care. Like, oh, he's, huh. Every time I turn around, they're together. Oh, they look so cute. Like, you need those moments um, because they, she's not blended in yet or he's not blended in yet. So... You got to make sure he's good. And then, you know, you got that one ignorant person sometimes that be asking all this too personal questions and uncomfortable questions. Like, yeah. You got to ward them off too. But the worst thing is mm -hmm. what happened to you is when you isolate them and they're on their phone and they're doing that because they're uncomfortable, one. But two, you leave them no other choice. Now everyone's judging them. Oh, they antisocial. Yes. Oh, they ain't talked to me and they ain't blah, blah, blah. It's like, no. Oh, they're standoffish. They that's oh i'll be damned they're standoffish and it's like that ain't me at all but it's like yo this is an uncomfortable environment for me like this should be about us and you basically for lack of a better word like protecting me i would say that more so on the woman's side because like the man like you gotta gotta assert yourself you know, mm -hmm. all the uncles and cousins want to try to give you the strong ass handshake. And then, you know, you <laughs> you pop one of their fucking knuckles like, yeah, nigga, like what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like that that happened to you. But fellas, you need to keep that in mind. But yeah, yes. I wouldn't want to do anything afterwards either. Exactly. And then to have that conversation where it's like, you truly don't know why I'm like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to hang out. I would rather just... I could have just stayed home because I would have had a better time at home in my jammies than sitting there mm -hmm. trying to load tweets on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so. with you. Ooh, especially being a homebody. Boy, when you're a homebody yes. and you and you know I'm a homebody and you pull me out the house and the, the out-of-the-house experience is, is, is a, a prime example of why I stay in the house in the first place, don't yeah. ask me to go nowhere else. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, how how are we gonna come back from this one? How are we? Y'all didn't. So we tried to, mm -hmm. but it was it was a lot of guilt and manipulation now that I think about it. It was like, oh well I'll just go home too because now my night's ruined. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be damned. I'll be damned. I do not care. Is this like what the granddaddy or Paw Paul said in holes? That is too damn bad. I don't care. <laughs> I'll be damned. Oh, God. You've been through it, yo. I was oh. a, the stories get so much worse, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> you got too many stories for you to be... Wait, what, hold on. Mm -hmm. my, brain, my brain froze. What was the subject again? What's the overall It subject? was... The subject was... Opposite gender friends. Oh, opposite gender friends. Okay, yeah. To be um, cheesing and smiling in the opposite gender's friend's face the entire night while I'm in the flesh next to you. Yo, stop saying nothing. in the flesh, yo. <laughs> Wait. I have to do the... <laughs> I think I cut you off or you cut yourself off. So what was the conversation you had about um, basically oh, not liking him bringing, like him bringing her up? Where I, I said that. I said it was like, it's one thing to... Like, bring me around, friends, everything like that. But it's another where I'm out here, I'm out of my own element, I'm in a completely different environment. Not only was I never introduced or get, got the opportunity to actually know these people, I was not once ever checked in on, even though I was right next to you. I wasn't checked in on. 
you not once did you ever thought to include me in the conversation mm. i said not only that but you sat and joked and cheesed in her face the entire night and i was like well dang she might be your girlfriend because i'm not clearly because she got the treatment that i never I'll did be damn. i'll be damn so i said that i said that i never got the treatment that we were together I don't think your friends could even tell that we were together because all we did was sit next to each other. I was like, you brought me here out my house for this. And I said, it was to, and I even said it was to the point where I went, almost went to the bathroom and called for my dad to come pick me up. That, I said, I'll be damned. Cause I, I did. I think I was texting my dad the entire night and yes, family influence is bad, but I needed to make sure that I wasn't crazy yeah. for how I was feeling. Yeah. And I was just like, mm, I think I might end up having to just disappear because it's not like he cared. I was sitting there thinking, I was like, if I got to the bathroom and dipped out for like five, ten minutes, who is he going to check up on me? Because if he's not, then it's clear that we we not really together like I thought we were. Because if mm. you can completely just act as if I don't exist in the presence of this female friend, <laughs> Why are we together? So when you said basically, so you let him know, hey, you keep bringing this girl up. Like, what's up with that? Mm -hmm. What was his response? It was like, oh, it's nothing. It was, mind you, 19. He said it like so that? Very, so very immature about it. <laughs> very immature you about definitely it. definitely wanted those cheeks. 19. You wanted everybody's <laughs> cheeks at 19. Nobody's that mature. I wanted, hey, if you wanted my homegirls, you met me in my early 20s when I was in college. I wanted the cheeks. I promise you. It might have been like two of y'all I didn't, but all of y'all at some point. <laughs> I shouldn't be indicting myself like this. These are jokes. Here will, here will, where did it do, do, here will. <laughs> no, they're not. It's, you always want the cheeks at that age. I mean, I'm, this is this is being real. But go and ahead. it was also like still very not very early on into our relationship, but it was one of the first hiccups I think that we ever had, mm. where I was like real like serious about it because I felt like I don't know how this is gonna go, and I said I'm not I'm not gonna just let this one roll over and roll on my shoulders i'm not letting it roll off my shoulders i was like this is the one that i was like sticking to my guns this about. is the hill i'm gonna die on yeah i say Wait. you might as well just shoot me now if we if we gonna <laughs> die on this hill i was like you gonna have to take out the gun and shoot me because i'm not getting off i'll be dead so, um after y'all broke up did you ever follow him still like or do you cut people off like did you did you ever find oh out goodness. or ever see them get together or anything no, but <laughs> this one is a doozy. This is why I know it's going to be a part three, because a lot of the times that I was with him, I felt as if I wasn't his type because of who he was attracted to. And he made a point to let me know, like the type of like That's weird. girls or like celebrity crushes that he like. I'm like, not one of them look like me. So I know that I'm not really your type. And it was another girl who, no beef with her. She innocent completely. It was more like he was just sitting there like dangling, trying to see what rise he was going to get out. Oh, Basically God. where I noticed is like, here you go again. You pick another female friend, you all up and down comments and everything like that. Meanwhile, <laughs> nothing on my phone. Dang. Got it. <laughs> and I noticed where- You were stalking him, go ahead. Yeah, it was- <laughs> and it wasn't stalking. You, it was it more like it was I'll more like <laughs> it was more like uh I don't know how to describe it, like break up, but he was constantly checking in, constantly checking in, giving that false idea that we were getting back together type of thing to try to like throw the hammer down on me, like, nope, psych, we ain't getting back together. Kind of try to like build up everything. So it was like a like a roller coaster. And I remember like the one of the last instances before I was just like, okay, you, you got to do was the next female friend, basically, that he was trying to like get a rise out of me with. He took her to a Christmas party at one of his other friend's house. And I was just like, <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. And was trying to, 
and some like the comments that he would leave under like the postings were a little it was like he wanted to like just like see he was like mm, i'm kidding unless type of thing yeah where it was and so it was kind of like a like gaslighting type of moment where he was like no you crazy why would you even think that da, 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 da. i'm like Negro, I can see your comments. <laughs> I'll, I'll be down. I'll, I'll be down. Oh, man. Fellas, we can be dumb sometimes. We be doing that, too. Like, yeah. That's how most of y'all get caught. Y'all just, just put it out there, and then you try to tell someone. No, they should get caught. They should. They shouldn't hide. Don't hide. Say it with your chest. No comment. If you're stupid enough to, to put it on social media where the world can see, you dumb. You do deserve to get caught. Exactly. Yuck. Yo, mm. all right. So we, we, we almost had an hour and a half. Yeah, we're going to do a part three. We're not going to do three in a row, though. We're not going to do three in a row. We got to give this a rest. We're going to let it simmer. We do actually have some really good topics to go. Uh, but we're going to end on this note. I'm going to go ahead and cue the music. Yo, man. Thank y'all for listening to our mush. Uh, <laughs> as y'all can rage. see, Erica has been through some shit. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. The Black History fact. Um, <laughs> actually, this is dope. So Spartanburg, South Carolina, real quick. T.K. Gregg. There's actually a facility named after him here. I used to go to the old original center, but it's a new center. Theodore K. Gregg was born in early 1900s in Marlboro County, South Carolina. After graduating from Claflin College, woo -woo, now Claflin University, my alma mater, in 1925, he was appointed as pastor of Silver Hill United Methodist Church in Spartanburg. He then left the city to get his medical degree in Nashville, Tennessee. Gregg, now a doctor, returned to Spartanburg where he worked as one of the few black physicians in the city. Uh, while attached to the Negro Annex of Spartanburg General Hospital, he is said to have never refused a call day or night. He had a passion for children and concerned by the lack of recreational activities for children in the north side of Spartanburg, Greg used his state and local connections to raise money for a wooden, why does it say wooden? A wooden recreation center in the community. Maybe there is another old TK Greg that makes sense because the one I went to was brick. Today, the city of Spartanburg's new community center on the north side is named in his honor. Greg died in 1939 at the young age of 36. Wow. That's a lot to accomplish by 36. The only thing that got my name so, yeah. on it is my LLC and my bills. All right, on that note. <laughs> on that note. Yeah, um... Thank y'all for listening to our mush. Uh, hope you, hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you have a friend or someone that you trust in your life that you can have these types of conversations with. Uh, these are healthy conversations. These are mushy conversations, but they're still important and we're having them and we're sharing them with you all so that y'all can learn from our experiences. So until next time, take care of yourselves physically, mentally, and financially, and we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.